Hey everyone, this is Nick and this is probably the most powerful laptop you can get with Linux pre-installed and one of the most powerful laptops, period. It's got the specs, the build quality, the looks, a real mechanical keyboard, a high refresh rate screen, a giant touchpad, and of course, it runs Linux. So let's take a look at this monster right after we take a look at this monster segue to today's sponsor. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And you probably already have heard about them, but if you haven't, all you have to know is that if you need a website, they're gonna be your all-in-one solution. Squarespace lets you build any type of website, from a personal portfolio to a blog or a full digital store complete with online payment. And they have tons of templates that you can even customize fully to represent your brand or identity. You can even enrich the website with a bunch of modules like a members-only area or a video gallery. And if you need help booking a domain name to let people access your website, or even if you just need a logo, Squarespace has tools for that as well. So head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment or just click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, so let's begin with the form factor and the build quality. There's no two ways about it, this is a big device. It has a 17 inch screen and it's really 17 inches, not the usual 17.3 or 18 inches that you often find in big laptops. It's also 16 by 10, which should please a lot of people. And all in all, compared to other laptops of the same size, it doesn't feel that huge. Here it is compared to my Executive 16 from Slimbook. And while it is wider, it's not by much for an additional full inch of display. Of course, it is not an ultra book, an ultra thin device, and it doesn't try to be. The goal is to have desktop class performance in a portable form factor. So it weighs 2.8 kilos and it's 38 centimeters wide, 27 centimeters deep and 2.7 centimeters thick. If you have to lug your laptop around in your backpack all day, that's a laptop that your back will definitely feel. It is built like a tank as well, with a chassis made of aluminium this time and not the usual magnesium alloy, which isn't bad but not as rigid. This one has literally no flex, no bend, no creaking whatsoever. It feels extremely solid and premium. It also resists fingerprints really well thanks to a soft touch coating on the inside of the laptop, which feels really good, almost rubberized in a way, but without feeling like plastic. And with great thickness comes great power, as the saying goes, right? Because this laptop is so thick, it can accommodate a really powerful cooling solution with two tall fans and plenty of space for airflow, which means that it tends to stay a lot quieter under load than most thin and light laptops. And since you have all the tools pre-installed to change the performance settings, you can either run it at max power and use all the cooling available, or you can run it at something closer to what a thin and light laptop would be like and get a very quiet experience. And on top of that, tall fans tend to produce a less high-pitched whiny noise than smaller flat fans in ultra-thin laptops, so even when the fan is running, the noise isn't as annoying as it might be in another form factor. And of course, as with all Tuxedo laptops, you're free to open it. And here you can access and replace the two M.2 SSD slots, the RAM, the wireless card, and the battery as well, which is screwed in and not glued. So yeah, it's a very, very big laptop. Very well built, but very big. But I can't hold that against it because it's basically its purpose. Okay, but with all that talk of power, what is actually inside the laptop? For starters, the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX. It's an 8-core, 16-threads, 4.9GHz processor that's basically the most powerful you can get in a laptop right now from AMD. The 7000 series has been announced, but it's really not widely available yet. All models come with at least 16 gigs of RAM and an RTX 3070 Ti with 8 gigs of dedicated RAM. You also get at least 250 gigs of PCIe 3 solid state storage and a 2560x1600 16x10 display that goes up to 240 Hz. It also comes with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. But that's not enough to make it the most powerful Linux laptop ever, right? So yeah, you can spec this thing up. It can accommodate up to 64 gigs of 4800MHz RAM, up to 4TB of PCIe 4 storage, 
and more importantly, either an RTX 3080 or a 3080 Ti. And all cards run at their maximum total graphics power allowed by Nvidia, which means they are not throttled in any way if you want to let the device run at max power. You also get a 99 watt hour battery, which is the maximum you'll be able to carry around in a device if you want to take it with you on a plane, for example. My review unit came with 32 gigs of RAM and the RTX 3080 Ti. And it comes in any color you want, as long as it's black. Now let's talk about the performance, because that's the main draw of this laptop. Get it? Draw? Like, power draw? First, the CPU. I ran Geekbench 6, and it gave me scores of 2121 in single core, and 10219 in multi-core. This is among the highest multi-core score I got on any device that I ever touched. Intel still has the edge in single core, with a 12th gen i7 reaching 2500, but the raw performance is definitely higher on the AMD side for multi-core. So yeah, that Ryzen 9 6900HX is a monster. It will handle anything you might ever want to do on a laptop. As per gaming, I ran the usual Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at high settings at the native resolution of 2560 by 1600, and it got me an average of 101 FPS. When cranking all the settings to the max, still at the native resolution, it still managed to reach 97 FPS. And if you don't mind 1080p for higher frame rates, at the higher settings and the game rendered at 1080p, the Stellaris 17 got an extremely comfortable 110 FPS. This thing will let you game, no doubt about it, but I don't think there ever was any doubt about that. Whether you like AAA titles or indie titles, you'll run everything at max settings, at the native resolution and get 60 FPS, no problem. I also ran the Unigine Heaven benchmark at the native resolution at high settings and got a score of 2715 and an average FPS of 107, with a minimum of 11 and a maximum of 162. It was a bit lower than expected, but that benchmark uses OpenGL and the CPU and the GPU weren't maxed out at all by the benchmark. So I guess I need to find something that is upper class, more powerful than Unigine Heaven to test these new devices. It also gave me an idea about thermals at 75 degrees under heavy load, which isn't bad at all. And it also gave me a peek at the fan noise, which in max performance mode was really decent and not too loud. It also probably means that some fan curve tweaking might allow the fan to run slower while allowing the laptop to go up to 80 or 85 degrees. And this brings us to the Tuxedo Aquaris, an external water cooling solution you can add to this laptop. It's optional though. It's a nicely designed little package. You actually plug it in using the laptop's power brick and it then passes that power through to the laptop with a barrel jack, which means you can leave that thing on your desk and you don't have to mess with tons of cables. It uses distilled water that you just pour in the small opening on the top and it connects to the laptop using the dedicated two ports at the back. You then use the Tuxedo Control Center app to connect to it through Bluetooth, and you get a few settings like you can tweak the fan speed of the Aquarius or the RGB patterns on it. I reran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at the native resolution and the highest possible settings with the Aquarius attached, and I got an average of 101 FPS, so a 4% improvement over using the laptop by itself. And sure, with that accessory, the laptop will run cooler for longer play sessions, but you're basically trading the fan noise of the device for the fan noise of the Aquaris, which is still pretty loud. So for that 17 inch model fully spec'd, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, but maybe for the 15 inch, which is thinner, it might be more useful since the water cooling will be more efficient than the fan inside. When you're done using the water cooling system, you can just disconnect from the control center and you have a small attachment that lets you drain the water from the laptop before transporting it somewhere else. And I will admit, seeing water come out of the back of your laptop is not an experience that is very reassuring. I mean, I know it's designed for it, but you still have to be very careful so no water runs inside of one of the ports that is next to it. That's not something I'm super comfortable with personally. Now let's talk about battery life. With its 99 watt hour battery running in Nvidia on demand mode with the display at 50% brightness, Wi-Fi being used to play YouTube videos in a loop in Firefox, 
The laptop lasted for 8 hours and 12 minutes. If you switch to using Intel only, you'll get about an hour of battery life. And of course, if you play games or do GPU intensive workflows using the dedicated GPU, you can expect more around 3 to 4 hours maximum. It's not bad and it's definitely more than enough for this use case. After all, with this device, you're not going to be using it as a laptop most of the time. It's gonna sit on your desk, basically as a desktop replacement. But it's nice to know that when you carry it around, it is able to last for a relatively long time before shutting down. Now let's talk about the keyboard. The Stellaris 17, being the thick boy that it is, has ample room to use a nice mechanical keyboard and that's what they're doing here. While the Stellaris 15 uses an opto mechanical keyboard, which felt nice but didn't have that clicky feel, this one uses Cherry MX ultra low profile switches. The key travel is really good at 1.8 mm and the click happens at 0.8 mm, which means you don't have to press the key very far to actually actuate the switch. It's a full keyboard as well with a nice numpad, which I love, but I know some people really don't like. Now what's more interesting is that some of the keys aren't using mechanical switches, notably the function keys and the whole numpad. They're using membrane switches instead, which feels right for these keys. And of course, the elephant in the room is the noise. This keyboard is super loud. Some of you might love it, but if you work near other people, you're going to drive them insane with that kind of noise. And Tuxedo is aware that it's an acquired taste because the next model of the Stellaris 17 will have the option to use membrane switches if you prefer. Still, it is a really good keyboard. The keys are a bit small for my taste and the review unit came with a German quartz layout, which I just cannot get used to. Although you can get virtually any layout you want here. And the clicky noise is definitely not for me. But I can't deny it's a very pleasant typing experience if you wear earplugs. Now, as per the touchpad, well, you can see it, right? It's humongous. It's also thankfully centered and it's covered in glass, so it's really smooth. It feels very precise and using it with tap to click feels great. Now, it is a dive board mechanism, so obviously you cannot click everywhere on it. It has to be in the bottom half of the touchpad and the sound it makes is satisfying and doesn't rattle. So, great inputs if you like clicky keyboards. The stroke feels good, but the sound is just way too loud. And now I realize that this phrase, taken out of context, might sound pretty weird. Now, what about the display? Well, as I said, it's 16 by 10, 17 inches, and it goes up to 240 hertz refresh rate, which, for once, the innards of the laptop might actually be able to use in certain games. The display is G-Sync compatible to avoid any screen tearing issues that might happen on Linux with Nvidia, and it's decently bright at 318 nits, although it is definitely not the brightest panel I've ever seen. It also has full sRGB coverage. Viewing angles are great, but it's hard to find panels that don't have that characteristic nowadays, and the resolution is 2560 by 1600, which means that you might even be able to use it without any scaling, seeing that it's relatively big. In terms of ports, you get a decent selection. On the left, you get the usual Kensington lock, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2x1 port, a Microsoft input, and a headphone jack. On the right, you get an SD card reader and two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And on the back, you have a port for the Aquaris external water cooling solution, a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2x1 port, an HDMI 2.1 port, a gigabit ethernet port and a barrel jack. Now for the downsides. There's only one USB-C port and that's not super future proof. I would have liked at least a second one. There's no Thunderbolt, but it's an AMD based laptop and you very rarely get Thunderbolt on AMD laptops. And I think that for the size, gigabit ethernet could have been replaced by 2.5 gigs. And of course the barrel charger is an annoyance. It's really big, it's attached to a huge power brick, but I guess with that kind of laptop, charging through USB-C was just not an option. Let's finish with the mic, speakers and webcam. The microphone is decent, but nothing to write home about. You'll want to run it at about 25% volume to avoid picking up on internal sounds, and it definitely will pick up the sound of your touchpad and of the keys. The speakers get really, really loud, 
but they don't distort or sound tinny at all. They have a good amount of bass and they will completely fill the room when you're listening to music or watching a show or movie, although the sound lags definition a bit. As per the webcam, well, it's 1080p and it can produce good results with decent lighting, but it's still a bit grainy, even in natural light. It is just a small notch above the usual potato cam. See what I did there? Notch? Webcam? Okay, I'll shut up now. And of course, we have to talk about the price. This laptop in its base configuration goes for 2,700 euros, taxes included. If you want the same model as my review unit with 32 gigs of RAM and the RTX 3080 Ti, then you'll have to pay a bit more than 3,500 euros. Again, taxes included. And that's not a price everyone can afford. I personally can't, even with that sweet, sweet YouTube money. It is a very niche laptop. It's meant for people who rarely carry their devices around, but for whom a desktop still wouldn't cut it. And for that specific crowd, it is probably the best Linux laptop you could get, with a fantastic keyboard, insane build quality, good display, good touchpad, and an absolute performance monster. If you're on a budget though, this will stay an aspirational device, and if you just need a desktop computer, well, the same specs will probably cost you a lot less than this. Still, it's really good to see super high-end laptops come with Linux out of the box. So, if you have the cash and you want the most powerful Linux gaming laptop or workstation you can get, well, there's a link to the website in the description below. And if, like me, you can only dream of being able to own such a device, well, you can maybe rewatch the video or just keep drooling over the specs. Goodbye, you giant chungus. I'll miss you. So, thanks everyone for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, or to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can also dislike the video and tell me why down there. And if you really enjoyed the channel and you want to support what I do, well, there are plenty of links in the description below for Patreon, PayPal, Super Thanks, YouTube memberships. If you want to, you decide. So, thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!